Welcome, Kirsten Olson, CEO of Children and Families First, one of the oldest and I would say most venerable advocacy organizations in Delaware. How are you? I'm great, Sharon. Thanks for having me. Well, it's my pleasure. Uh, I think the agency, as I recall now, it was the St. Vincent de Paul Society in like the 1880s, and that was a group of citizens uh, here in the Wilmington area, actually, who wanted to do something for the poor. Mm -hmm. And your agency has evolved, and you, you've got your fingers in so many pies. Can you overview quickly? Sure. So Children and Families First, you have a good memory, um, has been around since 1884. So this is our 136th continuous year of service. Um, in Delaware, we're a Delaware-based, Delaware-serving nonprofit organization, and our focus is really on helping children who are facing adversity on their journey to adulthood, and that we do all of the work that we do in the context of families, so working with children and their parents to make sure that everybody has the skills and supports that they need to be successful. And we do that in a huge variety of ways. And one of, the, one of the services that we provide that I think people are most familiar with is foster care and adoption. We've been doing that for more than a century. Um, but we also do parenting skills work. We do home visiting to pregnant and parenting women. Um, we do some behavioral health services, some health services for teens. Um, a really broad scope of services and one of the newest and most exciting things that we're just dipping our toe into is Head Start and Early Head Start in Kent and Sussex counties. So that's a big new venture for us that we're really excited about. Now this is a, uh, a statewide organization. So that's a lot to manage even in a state like Delaware. But I would like to point out that uh, you and your employees, that your whole team was recently voted uh, the best place to work in a mid-size agency. What's the environment there? And then we'll go on to what you do. Sure. Um, we were very honored to have been chosen as one of the top workplaces. Um, I think we were six. Sharon. So I'm, I'm not going to steal the first place winner somewhere. Really? Yeah, we won a leadership award. We were we had the leadership award for All the right. big size. Yeah. Um, I would say that we we currently have in the range of 250 staff. Um, given the the world we're living in right now, most of our staff are working remotely. Um, and so that's changed in some ways, the, the environment and the, the way that we do our work. But I think that Children and Families First really builds a family of our staff. You know, even though there are so many of us, we work really hard to stay connected with each other and to support one another in the work that we do. The work You would have hard. to, though, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, in, in the kind of work you do, there is such possibility for burnout you are working intensively with people who are struggling and uh, i can't imagine that all your employees are making six figures so uh they are doing this work because they're called to it and i'm sure they're paid perfectly well but uh, there is an element of mm, devotion let's say in work right. like this mm -hmm. Uh, how about during the pandemic, your clients, especially the young ones, uh, kids in foster care, it must be very unnerving to mm -hmm. be quarantined. I mean, I think it's unsettling. I know it's unsettling for everyone. And that when this all started, it you know, really came to a head in March and, and folks were sent home, wherever their home was, to kind of hunker down that I think we all hoped, perhaps naively, that this was gonna be, oh, we'll, we'll ride it out, it'll take a couple of months, and then we'll be back to quote unquote normal. And now we're kind of looking at six months working and, and delivering services in this way. Um, we've tried, like I said earlier, really hard to stay connected. We've done a lot of work to get technology into the hands of our children and families 
because we're delivering most of our services, just like you and I are on this Zoom today, um, it's crucial that our families had the means to stay connected to us. And so technology has been huge. Um, we do have a residential group home for kids in foster care where we have 16 teenagers who are in foster care who live in our Seaford House group home. That group home has just operated like it does every other day, 365 days a year, staff coming in every day to work with children um, and children who have been learning remotely. So imagine having 16 teenagers in your house who can't go to school. <laughs> Having three was enough for me. <laughs> Having 16 teenagers in your house under any circumstances, but kids who can't go to school have been kind of isolated from their family and friends. So trying to do everything we can to keep everybody safe, feeling supported, feeling cared for to manage through a really stressful time. And, and let's not forget that the emotional support, the physical support, what you do for young people as they're developing and evolving can only pay big dividends when they're grown up because uh, people in the world who have not been nurtured and loved and developed are the ones that cause a lot of trouble uh, as adults. So um, do you feel, do you feel like you're able with this, uh, pandemic to still deliver the kinds of services that you're used to delivering? Yeah, I mean, obviously it looks different and there has been a steep learning curve both for our staff and for the families that we work with who have really relied on that in-person support. But I think folks are have acclimated, have become more comfortable with the technology um, in some ways, it's made some services easier to deliver. So, you know, I think about our parenting classes, which we provide typically transportation so families can get to us. We provide childcare so that they can really focus on the, the work in the parenting class. We have to offer them in a very geographic specific way. Well, when we're virtual, it really makes things much easier for many of our families. We can have a group of families from across the state they can, some are in Wilmington, some are in Dover, some are in Sussex County. We're not, they're not rushing out the door with their children. And I mean, there's got to and... be a blessing in there somewhere. Right. Especially for the kind of work you do. Um, do you have a big backlog, a huge waiting list, like uh, Delaware Guidance Services uh, used to say they had 15,000 on the waiting list? How about you? We are trying really hard to manage those kinds of waiting lists. Some of our services are kind of open access, others are referral based. Um, so it really varies by program, but I think we're doing a pretty good job of, of keeping services moving to the right people at the right time. Couple more questions. Who can use your services um, and when do they need to contact you? All kinds of different people can use our services. Um, I think one of the places where we um, enroll families directly are in our home visiting programs. So those target pregnant women or very new moms who can enroll either during their pregnancy or just after delivery to get the support of a nurse or a social worker as their child develops. Um, we also offer some family therapy services called functional family therapy that are targeting really children of all ages and their families where they're experiencing maybe a lot of conflict and could use some family support and stability. Um, the parenting classes that I mentioned, those are open to anyone who has a child from zero to 16 or serving all different ages. So if you're struggling with you know, how, I'm, I'm a new parent, I don't really know how to do this, or I'm, I'm not such a new parent, but I'm really having a hard time. Mm. Those are services that we can provide to folks. And what kind of support are you looking for from the Delaware public? Um, we love the support of the Delaware public in lots of different ways, um, whether it's through direct donations of funds, 
those are always welcome. Um, we also have a need for supplies. I think about our programs that serve pregnant and parenting women. We can never have enough diapers. You know, those are the kinds of things that families really need support with. Um, I think helping get the message out about the good work that we do, whether it's to drive someone to our service or to to help us kind of fill a gap for something like diapers or school supplies. Those are the kinds of things that we really could use help with. And we will be most happy to, um, it's like, you know, internet messages and dogs in these home uh -huh. offices, you know. We'll be most happy to post, of course, your uh, web address. But are you, are, are there any special needs right now during the quarantine? Technology is huge. You know, as I mentioned, getting things like Chromebooks into the hands of families, getting data plans into the hands of families. So we often have families who may have a smartphone that they could use to stay connected, but they don't have enough minutes or data to last them a month. So those are the kinds of things that we really could use support with. And we're trying our MIS department is doing a lot of ordering of, of new computer technology. I mean, because we want this stuff to last for families, give it to them so it has a long shelf life, but that's a big need for us. Have you been able to take advantage of any of the CARES Act grants or? We have gotten some nice support from our philanthropic community here, um, the Delaware Community Foundation, the United Way, PNC Bank, all of those folks have helped us with some of our technology needs. The Laffey McHugh Foundation really made it possible for us to deliver services remotely on the fly, and that's been crucial. Strong together, that's the theme of this uh, interview program. Well, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to refresh everybody on Children and Families First, and we will uh, try to direct some, uh, I don't know, funding Chromebooks, something your way. That would be great. Um, yeah, and I'll check back with you. Okay. Thanks, Sharon. All right. Thanks so much and best wishes. Thanks.